everybody. We're back here with Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Now, Mr. Mayor, another subject tonight in the debate, um, subject for our nation for, for months now, has been um, the Supreme Court um, and sort of ramming through Amy Coney Barrett this close to the election when it's already started. And uh, there was some discussion tonight of what the stakes are here, but there's, there's a very interesting one that happened uh, on Monday. Two Supreme Court justices, Thomas and Alito, in an opinion about a case the court declined to hear, threatened the future of marriage equality. Basically laying the groundwork in their opinion that they think that it should be overturned, Obergefell should be overturned. Um, what's your message to your justices? Since that affects you specifically, you are a married gay man, what, do you, what would you like to say to those two justices? I guess what I'd like to say is that I'm, I'm tired of the existence of my marriage, my family, being up for debate. Uh, this question was settled, and when it was, that was a step forward in this country. And uh, the idea that, that these justices who uh, uh, ascribe to uh, a judicial philosophy or claim to uh, that's uh, about precedent and about not legislating from the bench to, to now uh, be, as I understand it, between the lines, uh, threatening marriage equality. Uh, it's just a reminder of what's at stake in this election. It's why I'm with the majority of Americans and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris who think it's the voters voting right now uh, who ought to choose the president who will choose the next Supreme Court justice. I mean, this is so personal for so many of us. It's personal for us because I know that my, my marriage, my wedding ring on my finger is only there by the grace of a single vote on the court. Uh, but it's personal in so many other ways, too. Uh, it's personal if, you're, uh, if you have pre-existing conditions and they could take that away. It's, it's personal uh, given what they could do to voting rights. Uh, so many things in our lives are shaped by these decisions. What they do in there is not just about arcane points of legal academia. Uh, it decides how our lives are going to go, and it's one more reason why it's so important that we win this election. Uh, if, if Amy Coney Barrett is um, appointed to the Supreme Court successfully, and it looks like it's going to be very difficult to keep that from happening, a majority of the justices will have been appointed by presidents who received a minority of the votes from the American people when they first uh, reached office. Um, it, it, it's a very odd um, shifting of power. that You've got this upcoming generation, basically everybody under 40... Oh, it's nearly unanimous that they're fine with gay marriage. That they, it's, it's obvious to them. Whereas you have a court that has a possibility of overturning something like that. What on earth would happen? You've got hundreds of thousands of people who have been married in same-sex marriages now. What on earth would be the mechanism going forward? What would happen to those people? You know, that's one of the questions that I've always uh, had for people like uh, uh, Mike Pence and, and, and perhaps Judge Barrett, I don't know, is, is that if, if you get your way and overturn our right to marriage equality, uh, is it your hope that uh, people like me have to get divorced and leave those we love? Or would you be satisfied for us merely to be stripped of our rights to visit each other in the hospital and file taxes together and be protected in, in the workplace? I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly what uh, they want to take us back to. What I do know is that the world got a little better when, uh, a lot better uh, for a lot of people, when marriage equality became the law of the land. And it's not the time to turn backwards. Um, you, you've got a new book. It's called Trust, America's Best Chance. Um, America has, in, in many ways, have a trust problem. And there's a lack of trust in institutions, in, in the president, in each other. Why is trust our best chance going forward? Well, lives depend on trust. Uh, just think about uh, the pandemic, uh, right? If, if people could trust that we live in the same reality and uh, we're willing to trust uh, the advice of, of scientists and, and doctors, and if we had a trustworthy president uh, reminding us to trust that guidance, uh, so many lives could be saved. And that's even more important when a vaccine comes through, uh, given the shocking proportion of Americans who say uh, they're not even sure they would get one. Uh, climate change is going to require us to uh, build a, a level of trust and cooperation with other countries. And again, uh, trust experts telling us sometimes bad news. Our entire political system is based on trust. That's what an election is, an exchange of trust. 
uh, between we the people who are trusted to pick our own leaders, something that was a pretty radical idea at the time of the, the founding, and we who trust our leaders to have our best interests at heart. And the more I thought about it, the more I've, I've found that uh, uh, from uh, our most basic interactions, just getting through life, making a purchase or walking down the street, uh, uh, to our political processes, we are trusting strangers with our lives all the time. But there's been a collapse in the level of trust that Americans have. If you look at survey data over the last 50 years, uh, the number of people who say they trust the government to do the right thing, the number of people who say you can trust other people to do the right thing has plummeted. We've got to change this if we're going to make it, if we're going to turn the tide and have the 2020s actually be a better decade for America. I think we can. I write in the book about some of the ways that trust can be built in a hurry or repaired. Mr. Mayor, uh, but, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off, but we, we're live, and, I, and I've, I've really got to go on a hard break right now. I'm so sorry to do that. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the book is Trust: America's Best Chance. It's available now. Mayor Pete Buttigieg, everybody. We'll be right back with Meanwhile. Thank you, Mr.